Um, so I'm working on Objective 4 with uh, Jay Arbuckle and Lois Wright Morton at Iowa State. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some results uh, we've found in, in exploring uh, relationships among farmers' perceptions on climate change. So to motivate this, I'll go to the uh, CAP research directive and a couple of the research questions under Objective 4. Uh, and the, the first question is, to what degree do farmers perceive climate change as a threat to their livelihoods, and how do those attitudes impact their willingness to adopt or support adaptation strategies? And a related question deals with mitigation, uh, but that one sort of uses some language about the impact of human activities um, as, a, as an impact on climate change. So these questions are similar, but there are some subtle differences that are really driving the sorts of things that we're trying to investigate. So our goal is to quantify some of these relationships using some data sets that we've heard about already. Uh, and what we need to do is translate these hypotheses into some conceptual pathways and then translate those pathways into, into actual mathematical or statistical models and then be able to measure those attitudes uh, quantitatively. And so these last two items are, are the things that I'm spending a lot of time thinking about. So the tools that we have to look at these things, uh, one we heard about earlier from Jay Arbuckle, the uh, CAP U2U survey, which uh, is hot off the press. And some other data that I've been looking at uh, comes from the tw 2011 Iowa Farm and Rural Life Poll, uh, which is done annually uh, by Sociology Extension at Iowa State. And the 2011 poll asked a series of questions about climate change. And the statistical tools that we've employed uh, include ordinal logistic regression, and we'll also take a look at some structural equation models. And this last technique is very flexible because it allows us to sort of deal with um, multivariate relationships dealing with several variables at the same time. So here's what our conceptual model currently looks like. Uh, at the center of this is uh, climate change belief and attribution. And this is uh, very similar to what Jay showed earlier. This is sort of at the center of the framework here. And we sort of hypothesize that belief sort of influences other attitudes related to perceived risks about climate change, as well as uh, support for various types of adaptation and mitigation actions. And I'll talk a little bit later about some possible influences on belief related to sources of information about climate change. So I'm going to sort of step through the pieces of this model uh, and talk about how we measure some of these constructs. So first, uh, with climate change belief and attribution, uh, both the Iowa poll and the CAP survey asked a similar question about uh, beliefs on climate change. And actually, this is essentially the same thing that Jay showed us earlier. Uh, there was a, a question about beliefs on climate change and five options for the response. And the first three basically are different versions of a statement that climate change is occurring, but the causes uh, that sort of range from uh, mostly natural to uh, mostly human caused. And then there was uh, an option for climate change is not occurring, and then finally an, sort of an uncertain option. So in the Iowa data, the distribution uh, looks like this. <coughs> the uh, three rightmost uh, groups there are the climate change is occurring. So similar to the CAP survey, we had basically a little over two-thirds of respondents say climate change is occurring, um, but the most popular category here was that it's sort of uh, both natural and, and human impacted. Uh, and we also had uh, about a fourth uh, reflecting that they're sort of uncertain as to whether climate change is occurring or not. And these are fairly similar to the numbers we're seeing in the CAP survey as well. So moving on to, to the other elements of the conceptual model here, some of the questions in the Iowa poll that allowed us to assess uh, perceived risk 
for climate impacts included three statements about various impacts of climate change. I am concerned about the potential impacts of climate change on Iowa agriculture, uh, also on my own farm operation, and then I believe that extreme weather events will happen more frequently in the future. And the response options here sort of range from strongly disagree to uncertain to strongly agree. So there was a sort of a five item response option there. And now the other thing that we're looking at in the conceptual model is support for various types of action. And we looked at three specific items here two deal with adaptive action and the third deals with mitigation. The first ones, uh, Iowa farmers should take additional steps to protect, pr protect their land from increased precipitation. Uh, the second one has to deal with uh, drainage. And the third item, again, is this mitigation item that government should do more to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And our first tool for analysis in all of this was an ordinal regression model uh, using uh, support for action, these action items as our response variable, and then to try and predict that as a function of the uh, perceived risk items that I'd mentioned on the last slide, as well as climate change uh, belief and attribution. So uh, this figure highlights the support for adaptive action and its distribution as a function of uh, the level of, uh, excuse me, the perceived risk. So in the very, in the upper left, we have, let's see if this thing works. In the, in the upper left are individuals ha who have a very low level of concern for climate impacts. And you can see that they are very likely to disagree that uh, they should take some action to, pr to prepare for the impacts of climate change. As we move across the top row there, their level of perceived risk is increasing. And then on the bottom, we have individuals who have a very high level of concern about the impacts of climate change. And they're more likely to agree that they should take steps to protect their land uh, from the impacts. Now, when we look at the mitigation item, this is strongly predicted by both the belief and the uh, level of perceived risk. And so the belief here is in the columns uh, going from climate change is not occurring to uh, on the far right there, we have uh, climate change is caused mostly by human impacts. And again, as you move from left to right, uh, in across the figures here, you can see that for those who believe that climate change is not occurring, they are very unlikely to support government mitigation. But as we move to the right, they're increasingly likely to support government mitigation uh, in regard to climate change. And we also see a similar pattern going from top to bottom dealing with concern. So that, that sort of sums up some things related to predicting support for action. And in some ways, they're similar to what Jay showed earlier. Uh, one other thing that we've investigated here is what are some factors that influence belief that climate change is occurring or is not occurring and the causes? Well, we also had a question on the Iowa Farm Poll about sources of information on climate change and individuals were asked how much they trust particular sources of information uh, about climate change specifically. And then again, they were asked to rate on a scale from strongly distrust to, to strongly trust. And we ended up combining these into a couple of groups that had very strong relationships in the data. And we termed these trust in agricultural interests. So the the groups that fell into that category were farm groups, the farm press, and agribusiness companies. And on the other side, we have trust in pro-environmental interests, uh, ranging from scientists, state and federal agencies, uh, conservation organizations, and even the mainstream media. So to, uh, to assess this, we employed a structural equation model 
And <clears throat> this tool allows us to combine these variables together to measure some constructs that we can't directly observe, like trust in agricultural interests or trust in pro-environmental interests. And what we find here is I'll highlight the, uh, the, two, pat the two coefficients uh, on the top there. Well, anyway, uh, you see that negative 0.268. What that suggests is that uh, as trust in agricultural interests increases, uh, the tendency to believe in human impact on climate change decreases. And on the other hand, uh, as trust in pro-environmental interests increases, uh, belief that human there's a human impact on climate change is increasing. And so we have sort of this um, two different uh, directions that impact climate change belief going on here. And then we can sort of uh, combine these things together. And all I'll highlight here on the, this last slide is that sort of the pathways from climate change belief to support for adaptation and mitigation uh, were similar to, to what we saw earlier on and similar to what Jay talked about uh, earlier today. So just to highlight some of the things that we found in looking at the data from the Iowa Farm Poll, uh, we do really see a range of opinions on the attribution and belief uh, in climate change. And we find that per this perceived risk for the impacts of climate change is a strong predictor of support for adaptive action. But the predictor of support for government mitigation, actually the strongest predictor there is the belief that there is a human impact on climate change. And finally, uh, we find that these trust in these different uh, actors uh, influences belief in sort of uh, opposite ways. So with that, uh, I'll take any questions. Okay, we have time for a question or two. Great. Uh, yeah, there, there, uh, there were a couple of things as we delved into this that made us scratch our heads a little bit, and I didn't have time to talk about it here, but uh, there, there are some subtleties in this relationship between belief and either support for adaptation or, or mitigation um, that really uh, support for adaptation, it seems like, is really driven by the perceived risk more so than the belief. So it's almost like individuals can have, uh, maybe aren't sort of uh, um, conceptualizing, yeah, I believe in climate change, but I'm sort of worried about these impacts, and then they do have some support for adaptation. And that was a little bit, you know, a little bit surprising, but as we thought through it, there was, there was maybe some logic, logic there to how people might uh, perceive those things.